Well, I want to go to Ukraine now, where in the past few hours, the army has declared that new gains around the embattled city of Bakhmut. A military spokesman says Ukrainian units are advancing despite a shortfall in ammunition and personnel. One brigade says it has carried out offensive actions on the western outskirts of that city. Russia's Wagner mercenary fighters say they are also making progress inside the city itself. Well, elsewhere, at least one person was killed in a missile strike in the southern port city of Odessa. It came amid a large wave of strikes overnight. And in Crimea, a freight train has derailed as a result of what Russian-backed authorities are calling a, quote, intervention of unauthorized persons. Let's get more on that from our Sam Kiley, who's in southeastern Ukraine. Certainly plenty of developments to talk about. Uh, Sam, let's start with that derailment. What else are you learning? Well, this was a rail link between the two main uh, cities in the Crimean Peninsula. This, of course, was invaded by Russia back in 2014 and later illegally annexed. It has been the scene of special forces operations, uh, psychological operations, obviously, and p p perhaps partisan attacks in support of Ukraine. Now, this mysterious derailment uh, has been described or tongue-in-cheek, really, description from the Ukrainian authorities as a consequence of poor maintenance or uh, and other such remarks. Uh, this is consistent with them uh, being somewhat coy and mocking in terms of uh, when there are strikes by their special forces or drones or other mechanisms deep behind Russian lines or indeed inside Russia itself, they don't admit responsibility. But clearly this was uh, attacked uh, in some way. The railway has resulted in a derailment. Uh, carriages have come off the line. This is an important uh, logistics chain, part of the logistics chain supporting the Russian war effort further forward on the front lines. So could be seen perhaps as part of the ongoing softening up operations by Ukraine ahead of uh, a wider offensive sometime later in the summer. Of course, the ground war continues in Bakhmut in particular, with advances being claimed by both sides. The Ukrainians claiming advances on the flanks of the city, Wagner mercenary group making claims about small advances in their house-to-house -house fighting in the city itself. Uh, no great strategic change there at all as the Russians continue their campaign in the air of essentially trying to get the Ukrainians to spend as much of their air defences as they have got ahead of this ground offensive when the Russians will obviously want to try to use their aviation to best effect inside Ukrainian territory at the moment. Uh, they don't risk their aircraft uh, coming close to the front lines because of the capabilities now that the Ukrainians have in terms of their abilities to shoot down both missiles and, of course, ultimately aircraft. Linda? And, and Sam, we saw another barrage of missiles overnight, thankfully most intercepted. Uh, but Russia claims it has hit Ukrainian military infrastructure. Is there any truth to that? Uh, probably. Or possibly, uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, the reporting restrictions here mean that uh, we're not able to report when there have been strikes by Russia on military installations because that gives intelligence, valuable intelligence, back to the Russians in terms of their targeting. There is sometimes uh, some delay allowed uh, between uh, the attack and when we can report it, but at other occasions the Ukrainians simply do not admit uh, to any uh, strikes against their military targets being conducted outside of the front line areas uh, by Russia. But clearly they do occasionally get through. We've seen that with some very spectacular explosions, clearly uh, important logistic nodes or even ammunition dumps over the last year of the war. Uh, and the Russians have made this claim. They've got no supporting evidence for it. Uh, we know that the Ukrainians are saying that only one missile out of 30 got through to its target and there was some debris that uh, killed one person in the southern port city of Odessa. That may well be uh, the so-called success that the Russians are claiming there, Linda. Mm, interesting perspective. Sam Kali for us. Good to have you there on the ground for us. Thank you so much. Well, global wheat prices fell earlier after Ukraine and Russia agreed to extend a deal that allows grain to be exported from Ukrainian ports in the Black Sea. 
The agreement is critical to the world's food supply, and it was brokered by Turkey and the United Nations last year. Moscow says the extension will last at least two months, saying that period is decisive when it comes to the deal's future. The U.S. says that while it supports the agreement, Moscow should in no way be using hunger as a weapon. We strongly support the UN's and Turkey's efforts on the deal, which keeps global food and grain prices low. But as Secretary Blinken has previously said, we should not need to remind Moscow every few weeks to keep their promises and to stop using people's hunger as a weapon in their war against Ukraine. Well, Becky Anderson, who is, of course, a regular host of Connect the World, visited a ship carrying Ukrainian wheat for export. She has more now on why the grain deal matters so much. An unassuming-looking port in Istanbul with global significance. It's from here that inspection teams from Russia, Ukraine, the UN and Turkey deploy to vessels anchored offshore. The ship that we'll be boarding is anchored in the Marmara Sea. It left Chornomosk port in Ukraine on May the 12th, carrying about 26,000 tons of wheat. And it is one of the last vessels to transit under the current terms of the Black Sea grain deal. Right, this vessel is actually quite low, so we're quite lucky because I might have had to actually climb up the side of this boat, but as things stand, it's an easy, it's easy access on. Hi. These inspectors are looking for any unauthorized cargo or crew. So, Captain, we're going to conduct the inspection and yes. we're going to start with the documentation yes, checklist. Yes, we already done the commission is here, is it okay? Perfect. Mohammed is the captain of the Pacific Rose. So these are the passports this is the pass of the crew. Code, and the crew is ready for a check phase. Also on the checklist, the shipment itself. In this case, over 26,000 tonnes of wheat. To get here, Mohammed and his crew had to navigate through what is very much a live conflict zone. But this is safe. I contact with control, yep. Chernomas control and Odessa control by in, in this area. Got it. Everything is safe. I contact for, uh, for in the corridor. When in the corridor, OK, no have any problem. Mm. I sent only to GCC, ETA to Istanbul. Mm -hmm. When ETA to Istanbul, everything is OK. Since the beginning of this deal, some 1,800 ships have done this route and been inspected. That's some 30 million tonnes of foodstuffs feeding more than 150 million people and perhaps, as importantly, bringing the price of food globally down by some 20 per cent. The work of these inspectors now goes on after Turkey's president announced an extension of the deal, meaning for at least another two months, the world can breathe a sigh of relief. Becky Anderson, Mamara C, CNN.